I've got a challenge problem set up right here for us to look at together. This is like a programming puzzle, and it comes from last December's Advent of Code event. Just as a quick introduction, um, if you've seen some of my last videos, we've been working through some of those problems, and here we are on day five. They get a little bit more complex as the month progresses. And so this is starting to get a little bit interesting. And, you know, typically you would pick a programming language, so like Python or Ruby, whatever, doesn't matter. You would write a program, feed it this input file here that we're looking at, and it would spit out the answer that they're looking for. But it's also fun to try and think of how can I constrain myself to solve this problem in some way? So in this case, I want to look at how can we just use the basic tools that Vim gives us uh, to solve this problem. So we'll start in the input file here and we'll transform this input file into the answer using motion commands, um, all the different kinds of commands that Vim has. I shouldn't say that they're basic because there's you could spend your lifetime learning them. So let's look at this together. And if you're not already convinced that the sky is the limit with Vim, uh, this will hopefully do that for you. Up at the top, we've got nine columns with letters in each of them. And in the problem description, they describe these as crates or boxes stacked up on top of each other. Down below, we have a whole bunch of instructions on how to move the crates one by one from column to column. Move three from two to five, that's move three crates from column two to column five. And just to point out, um, even though it says move three, we gotta still move them one by one. And that's because at the very end, uh, we want to figure out what crates are sitting on top of all of those uh, piles of boxes. And that's going to be, you know, a string of letters. We want to know what that string is. So that's what we're trying to figure out. As for actually solving the problem, uh, I'm going to approach it in two parts. So part one is going to be just reformatting how these crates are stacked up so that they're easier to deal with. Part two is going to be changing these instructions from something that is more geared towards a human into something that Vim can directly interpret in order to move the cursor around and uh, you know, pick up letters and put them in different columns. First things first, let's get rid of the brackets and the numbers because we don't need them. So to do that, I can do substitute command. And I know that it's really only the first nine lines or so that I'm interested in. So I can do a range from line zero to line nine, substitute, and then let's just get the skeleton of the substitute command down here. So the first between these first slashes is what I want to search for. Between the second set of slashes is what I want to replace it with. And then any flags go on the end here. And I already know I'm going to need the G flag because the G flag lets us match more than one thing on each line. And so since there's like three different types of things I want to search for, I can specify all those if I put them within uh, this bracket notation here. First of all, I want um, an opening bracket. So I need to do escape open bracket. Next thing I want is also a closing bracket. Grab those. And then finally, I want to get any digits. Right now, we're replacing those with whatever we put in here. Really, I don't even want spaces, but um, we need the spaces to preserve the ordering of those columns. You can see without the space, it kind of screws up how those are ordered. This looks good to me. So we'll replace those. And then I don't need this line, so I can just DD to delete it. And so what I'm trying to work towards here is instead of having columns, I would like to have rows where each row represents a stack of crates and the top of the stack is the rightmost character in the row. So imagine we had an imaginary row, so A, B, and C. Uh, I could just highlight this, press capital J, and now it's on run one row. But the problem with that is C is at the bottom here of the stack when it's a column, but then now it's at the top of the stack. That's a problem we have to solve first. And we can solve that using a different command called the move command. So if we look at the help docs for move, um, it says move the lines by range to below the line given by address. So let me go back to my uh, column example here with ABC. You can see above A is line nine. So if I come down to the line where C is at and do MO9, it moves C up above those. And then if I want the correct order, I have to come down to the B and do MO10. And now I have CBA, which is the correct order. But of course, it would suck to have to do that per character. You can use the global command to just do this all at once. So for example, I could highlight this uh, G 
Oops, select the start of the line and then just do MO9 and I get the correct order. So let's delete these, uh, this example and see this applied to our actual columns. Let's see this in action. So again, I can do a range 0 to 8 global command. Just highlight each, each line. Uh, we want to move it to line 0. If I toggle, if I undo the change and toggle between them, you can see that reversed the order of each column for us. So that's what we want. So we're getting close to be able to join these columns into rows using the J command. But the problem is we can't just highlight this and say J uh, because that screws everything up completely. We need a way to be able to select column by column. So maybe we could come in here, grab the data, and then give ourselves you know, a scratch pad of some sort, paste it in, and um, then do the join and then repeat that for every column. We're gonna use a macro to do that. So let's, let's undo those changes and begin recording that. First thing I'm gonna do is set a mark. So MA will set a mark identified by A. And then I wanna give myself an empty line. So I'm gonna do capital O and that put me in insert mode. So I'm gonna escape back to uh, normal mode. And then after that, um, I'm gonna begin recording. So QQ. I want to yank this line, so YY, and I want to paste it seven times so that I can give myself kind of some, some workspace to be able to do the joining. So I've yanked the lines, and I want to paste it 7P. Instead of lowercase p, I did capital P so that my cursor stayed up at the top. And then here I'm going to set a second mark, so MB. So now I've got mark A and mark B, and I'm going to jump down to mark A next, so single quote A puts me down there. I'm at the top of the column. Now I can do vis uh, visual block, so control V. I know that each column has at most seven characters in it, so I can do 7J. Uh, then I can press X to get that into my unnamed register. I can now jump up to the B mark uh, with single quote B. I can paste that column in, and then I can visually select the inner paragraph, so VIP. Instead of just J, uh, I can do GJ, which will join without putting a space in between everything since we don't really need that. I'm gonna hit enter just to go down a line. I'm gonna hit capital O again to give myself another new line. Then I'm gonna hit enter again <laughs> to give myself another new line. Uh, I'm gonna escape and then I'm gonna hit Q just to finally stop recording. And with any luck, we should be able to replay this macro eight more times to all those other columns. So let's try it out. Eight at Q. All right, so um, looks like it probably worked. Let's clean up the file a little bit because we've got a lot of white space and we've got a lot of just empty lines. One thing I could do is just do a global command. I could get rid of any lines that have nothing on them. So D, and then if I do an underscore, this won't clobber any registers, it'll just go to like a black hole basically. So you can run that, there's 12 fewer lines, so that's a little bit better. Um, I'm just gonna manually delete these for the sake of time. All right, so there we go. We've got our columns here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we've got our instructions. So next step is to reformat these instructions. So if you remember to the first of the video, I was saying that we only want to make sure we move one box at a time or else we're going to end up with an incorrect order at the end. We want to think of this as three different commands of the same thing. So uh, I want to look at this first number here after move and basically just duplicate the line uh, that many times. So here's one way we can actually do that. Let me get rid of these lines we just made. Uh, I'm going to start by recording a macro, so QQ. Then I want to always ensure that my cursor is at the very beginning of the line, which it is in this case, but just since we're trying to be programmatic about it, I'm going to hit zero. And then W will get me to the first digit that we're interested in. I'm interested in grabbing this value and I want to put it into a named register. Uh, I'm going to use named register A. So I can do double quote A followed by Y-I-W, so yank inner word is how I think of that. Now I've got three sitting in register A. I can safely delete this line because if I delete it, it goes to the unnamed register. So we still have the three in the named register, so that doesn't matter. Now, at symbol followed by A, 
you can see down in the right corner of the, the Vim window, there's a three there, and I can do a uh, capital P now to apply that paste that many times. So using the value that's in that register. Now that we've duplicated these, I need to set up my cursor for the next line. So however many lines I paste it, I want to move my cursor down that many times as well. So I can do at A and then J. So that'll get me down to the next set of lines. Now I'm ready to stop the macro, so Q. And then I want to apply this to all the remaining lines. And I could try to figure out how many exactly lines there are left, but I'm just going to be lazy and do norm, some big number like 9,000 at Q. And then I'm going to run this. And so let's check it out. This command, move three, it looks like it's duplicated three times. I've got this command, move two, it's duplicated twice. And I've got four fours right here, and then seven sevens. So that part's working. The next thing I want to do is actually change these, change each, each of these lines into Vim commands, which I will then feed to another command in Vim called normal. And normal will be able to interpret those as if I type them in myself. Hopefully it'll make more sense once we do it. But so to do this transformation, we'll do substitute and I'll use percent %s to just say, apply it to the whole file. We want to match lines that start with move, space, and then followed by a digit. We need a plus here because there could be it could be two digit number. And then space from, space, and then we want to use a match group to capture this, this next digit because it's important. So open parentheses, it's a digit. So slash D slash plus, it's more than one digit. And the match group, uh, space, two space and then another match group for this other digit so slash d slash plus and the match group and now that's everything we want to capture so now what do we want to replace it with we want to replace it with actual vim instructions pretend like you are vim and i'm giving you commands so we want to use that first digit that we captured uh, as a line number so in vim if you want to navigate by line numbers you do colon followed by the number, so we can do slash one to use the value in that match group. And then you gotta hit enter, so here we need to do slash r for that. And then next, dollar sign, because we want to jump to the end of the line to get to the top of the stack of crates. The next thing I wanna do is x, because I want to grab whatever character is there, so x will grab it and put it into my unnamed register. And then I want to move to the next um, column, the column we want to place place the, the character into. We'll do that via line numbers again. So colon slash two will get us our next match group value. And then we need to do enter again, so slash r. And then uh, we'll do another dollar sign to go to the very end because we want to make sure and put it on top. And then we can do p to paste that character in. Finally, another slash r. And this last um, slash r is so that we have separation between each of these instructions. I'm going to run that substitute command and take the highlighting off. And you can see now these are all our instructions. So bear with me for one more macro. Um, first, I'm going to move my cursor right in between the instructions and the crates. I'm going to set a mark here, MA. Then I'm going to begin recording, so QQ. And then I want to move down one, so J and then DAP. And I just deleted the, the first instruction. It went into my unnamed register. And now what I want to do is colon X E X E for execute. And I want to execute a normal command where um, it's doing whatever is in my unnamed register. So at symbol double quote is the way that you reference the thing that you have copied, and I can apply a normal a normal command to that. So if we run this, I would expect one instruction to be applied to those crates above. Looks like it it did. It was quick. It's hard to tell, but I saw some characters move, so that's a good sign. And now we're almost ready to stop recording, but first I need to jump back down to my mark. So this is kind of our home base to set up for the reapplying the macro. So 
Now I can hit Q to stop. So now we just need to replay this macro for all the other instructions and it uh, will be able to watch it doing the work for us. So 9,000 at Q and it's going. But we'll watch this for a second. All right, so now that all the instructions have been applied, we just need to skim off the top to get the answer. Uh, one cool thing we could do is we could do a global command here and we can match slash W will get characters, I guess. And then um, a dollar sign. So we want the last character from each line. So in this case, I can say norm ND caret. And that means go to the next match and delete up until the first of the line. And so you can see I'm left with only the very last characters. Uh, so now from here, we can just select this and do a GJ. So we get Q, G, T, H, F, Z, B, H, V, Q, G, T, H, F, Z, B, H, V. Yep, that's correct. 